Do you know what this is? It's an apple corer. A friend of mine, Carla White, calls it Derek Cora, the spirit medium. Because, yes, apple corer, Derek Cora. Kind of rhymes. But also, this apple corer has as much psychic ability as Derek fucking Cora. And to be honest, I probably can predict the future way better than Derek ever can. Tell me the lottery numbers for next week. So, my time with Derek Akora. I met Derek the other year. A friend of mine was producing a TV pilot for Derek, and my friend got in touch and asked if I'd like to write the music. Now, if you know me, you know I'm an atheist, skeptic, and I don't believe any of that fucking bullshit about psychics and fucking talking to the dead and predicting the fucking future. Because, let's face it, if anyone could do that, then maybe they could predict the lottery numbers and win a shitload of money for charity for starving people to help people maybe they could predict disasters and avoid the loss of thousands and thousands of lives but no it's all bullshit so i kind of struggled a little bit thinking do i want to work with this big faker i didn't really want to let my friend down it was a paying gig so i eventually thought fuck it it'll make a good story that's why I'm telling it now. So they're producing this pilot for a Derek Akora TV show. Sky Television showed some type of interest and wanted sort of a pilot making and to take it from there, you know, how that shit kind of goes. So Derek wanted to produce a pilot and the pilot was going to be all about Derek's life, where he came from, his friends, his family, what he does today. Bullshit, basically. I said I'd, I'd write the music. Yeah, I'll come on board. That's fine. So initially they were shooting the intro sequence for this pilot, the opening credits, and they asked if I'd want to come along and, and, and watch the filming, which obviously I'm a film and TV geek, so yeah, let's get along there. The initial scenes were shot in Derek's big house in Southport, so I was invited on Sunday morning and I turned up and the first thing I thought when I saw this big fuck off house was, hmm, so this was the house that Lies built. It was a nice house. So I kind of went inside and had already started filming this intro sequence. The whole intro sequence basically had Derek going into his attic, digging out all these letters from all these fans who he'd predicted futures for or spoke to dead relatives or whatever and he takes these thousands of letters takes him into his office and he kind of reads them and he's all very serious and ah oh, you know i'm battling with you know all these spirits and all this shit and fucking hell it was awful and the first scene when i walked in they were shooting in his basically him come down the ladder from his attic and the attic was in him and his wife's bedroom so i kind of did panic a little bit when i knocked on the door and some guy opened the door and said yeah yeah sure go straight off straight into the main bedroom i'm thinking holy shit what the fuck's going on i don't have to remove my clothes do I do anything? Luckily I didn't. The thing that struck me when I walked into that main bedroom was there's a big massive fucking canvas over his bed. It's a, basically a big photo of him and his wife so they can lay in bed and look at themselves and it's all a bit worrying. Anyway after they shot that scene Derek come across and shook my hand and introduced himself and I introduced myself and I did think fuck me this guy is like a fucking cult leader. He did creep me out straight away and then they went off to shoot the next scene which was in his office and his fucking office was a amazing. It, it, it had floor to ceiling shelves full of books. I was just glancing at these books and they were all these fucking spiritual fucking bullshit books. I'm thinking yeah alright each to their own mate but fucking hell. And then there was a load of Derek merchandise in there so there was programs for his shows. There was Derek calendars where he's like in psychic poses mm, talking to dead relative and it did amuse me quite a lot. Anyway there was a bit of a break after that scene and we all kind of hung out in the kitchen and I I discovered then that basically Derek and his wife are both fucking chain smokers. That was fucking a bit gross. But then I saw cold reading firsthand. It's basically what Derek does to make people believe he can talk to the dead, look into your mind, and do spooky shit like that. You see, most of the crew were actually from Liverpool, and he assumed I was from Liverpool. So he was chatting to me in the kitchen, and he's like, "You know, I've always wanted to shoot, you know, a TV show with all local people from Liverpool." And soon as he said Liverpool because I'm not from Liverpool. He obviously saw me tense up slightly. So then he had another go and he said, I, I, you know, I, I kind of wanted, you know, to, to, to get the crew together, basically made up 
of, of all people in Merseyside. So he cast his net out a little bit further. And on that second attempt, he actually, he had me there. So it's like, well done, cold reading. Not necessarily at its best, but cold reading all the same. So then the next scene was in his games room where there's a big pool table and one wall had photos of all his various appearances on TV shows, Most Haunted and the other bullshit he did, and photos from opening local supermarkets and what have you. But then there was a full wall dedicated to fan art of Derek and you know what, because there was crew around, I just couldn't take any photos, but the best one was Derek riding on the back of a glittery unicorn. It was just so mystical and amazing. And it was while he was setting up this scene, I realised that most of the crew were in fact taking the piss out of Derek behind his back, and they were all laughing, because apparently Derek's got a spirit guide called Sam, who he speaks to on the other side. If anything kind of went wrong, was slightly out of place in this game's room as it was getting set up, the crew were going, oh, it must be Sam. Has Sam moved that picture? Has Sam moved this? So it was it was quite funny. They were all taking the piss. When they were getting the light readings, they wanted me to go and stand in place of Derek. So I was kind of Derek's stunt double. And I had to stand at the pool table where they'd laid out several letters from these fans. And I had to stand there and I, I was supposed to be sort of poring over the letters while he got the correct light readings, adjusted everything. So I stood there still looking down at the letters and I started reading two of the letters and I just felt physically sick because I'm thinking, man, you are just fucking with these people's heads. Yeah, you can say, oh, well, you know, he's bringing some type of comfort. No, he's not. He's fucking trampling all over the fucking memories of dead fucking relatives. He's a fucking ghoulish bastard and taking money for it. The, the letters were like from parents who'd lost a daughter and saying, thanks, Derek, for, for, for speaking to my daughter. And let's face it, he didn't fucking speak to the daughter. And I know people believe what they want to believe, and I just find it horrible that he's taking fucking money for this and making a living out of this because it is fucking bullshit. So I kind of, at that point, I, I kind of just wanted to be out of there. Soon after that, I just made my excuses and went. So I said my goodbyes, and the following weeks they recorded lots of stuff, and I started getting these rough cuts through. And Jesus Christ, they were fucking bad. It was Derek wandering around Bootle where he grew up talking to some of his friends in different places and the amazing psychic predictions he made like his friend who worked in the EE mobile phone store and apparently he was moving from the Bootle branch to the Ellesmere Port branch which is a fucking load of miles away but but Derek Derek had actually predicted that pointless piece of shit that he'll actually be moving to a fucking different branch I mean what fucking good does that actually do anybody I predict you will be moving from this branch to a branch so fucking far away that you'll be travelling for fucking hours and hours every day. Thanks, Derek. Thanks a lot for that, mate. Absolute pointless shit. But the best, the best of the lot was the two nights they held at a small theatre in Liverpool where they invited lots of fans around and Derek got to strut his stuff on stage and talk to the dead with the help of his spirit guide, Sam. That footage has got to be seen to fucking be believed. Derek makes miss after miss after miss before he gets a hit. But they're all believers. They don't actually see the misses. They just remember the hits. I mean, there's one old woman there. And Derek speaks to a dead friend of hers called Bill. Who the woman doesn't know who it is. So he's like, Billy? Oh, no. I don't know Billy. William? No. No, no, no. Not a William. Will? No. Don't know who it is. Uh, anyway, that spirit's wandered off. Um, Bob's turned up. Do you know Bob? No. Robert? No. Oh, eventually, he hits a name. And yeah, she remembers him. It's a friend of a friend. But she didn't like him. Oh, no. No. Derek knew she didn't like him. How could he possibly know that she didn't like this friend of a friend? Surely it's not the expression on her face, is it? And then he gets his spirit guide, Sam, to go and dig this old lady's book out which is in some type of fucking weird shit heaven up there where all our lives are all sort of pre-written and Sam has a quick look and says yeah she's gonna live many more years and she's quite happy and he says but Sam does say you're only gonna live that many years if you take your medication and she laughs because how does he know that she's on some type of medication <laughs> oh old people I don't know and then there's the man who's lost his brother in a car crash Derek 
emotionally speaks to the brother and the man's in tears obviously but Derek has some really really important information for him he tells him that when his brother got killed in this car accident it's okay because it just went grey and he didn't fucking feel anything seriously it's fucking like a comedy special so the months went on the pilot started coming together I wrote some music and to be perfectly honest I was struggling I didn't really want to be part of this bullshit Every time I had a particular piece of music to write, I really wrestled with my feelings and the bullshit that surrounded it. And I kind of hated every moment. It was awful. I said I'd do it. I didn't want to let the producer down. And then one day they sent a rough cut to Sky Television just to give them an idea of the pilot. And Sky Television went, what the fuck is this bullshit? No, we're not interested. And then it was completely written off and the project just fell to pieces and I escaped with a good story and luckily I didn't have to fucking see it through so I was completely off the hook thanks Sky Television for seeing how shit he really is that, that was my time with Derek it was quite interesting it has taught me that I'll never ever take a gig for something that I don't actually believe in because emotionally, morally, I'm going to fucking struggle with it. It's fucking awful. Money's not everything. You've got to kind of like what you're doing, believe what you're doing. And just a little sort of footnote to this. One thing I did discover, because I put various posts out after the project disintegrated, Derek's wife, Gwen, has a very important role in his psychic career because she's constantly scouring the internet for anybody saying anything negative about Derek, including people saying he's bullshit and then she gets in touch with them and threatens them with legal action. I mean, what legit career has your wife, your husband, your partner backing you up and fucking stopping anyone dissing you all the time on the fucking internet? I mean, doesn't that make it sound like it's all just bullshit and Derek's just lying? Mm, it really, really does. So I kind of have a feeling Gwen might get in touch with me for this video, but none of it's lies. It's all true. It's all my opinion. Derek Akora and your wife, go and fuck yourselves with your bullshit, ripping people off, corrupting the memories of the dead, you fucking ghoulish bastards. Tell me the lottery numbers for next week. <laughs>